Welcome to today's Practice of Paint class. I'm going to show you how to get a dreamy background with simple strokes that will make it easy for you to make beautiful, beautiful paintings. All right, so we're going to start out. This was um, a 12 by 12. I'm going to use an 8 by 10 just to get the technique down for you. Um, we're using some floaty medium. We might use that just a little bit. And that comes in a couple of different looking bottles. That's the older bottle. And then we're using multi-surface paint. So I'm gonna use cobalt blue and some violet pansy. Any kind of purples and blues are gonna help you. And some white, because you're gonna see right in here, I did some white. Now, what I want you to see, all right, that this is simple and fun, and there's a couple of different ways to do it. I can use my painter sponges. These come as a set like this. All right, I like to teach you on here new techniques, new product and how to use it that you might not be familiar with. All right, so then I'm gonna get my flat three quarter inch flat brush. Now I have um, it and my signature, uh, those were signature brushes that are lavender. And this is my pack of value pack brushes. These are great for students when they're starting. And actually I use these for many, many years. There's 10 brushes. It's a 1059 set. It's very inexpensive. And they average on our site, I think $16. And sometimes we have sales. If you go to my Facebook group, we have sales there also. All right, so onestroke.com is where you find all my painting supplies. I'm asked that over and over. I'm also asked over and over about floating medium. Now, I really wanna talk about that floating medium because there's a couple of different things. I don't wanna confuse you, but floating medium is actually in a gray and white bottle now. So um, I might have one right here, there we go. So this is how floating medium looks now, but they are there are bottles of these out there still. All right, so floating medium is the fluff that's inside the paint with no pigment. So if you feel like you need water, we don't use water except for doing inky color, um, liner work with a liner brush. So, and we can't use floating medium with a liner brush. So I don't wanna confuse you, but I'm just wanting you to know this. All right, so floating medium is if you feel like you need water, no water, use floating medium, all right? So I need to like confirm that over and over because I keep having questions. Then sometimes there's blending gel, which is another medium, which I use for fabric painting. I use when I want the paint not to dry fast. All right, so it extends the time. But the way that help, I used to say, my color is the very wine color, <laughs> but now it is my color is this, all right? So if you're a beginner, this is perfect for you to be watching these practice stroke classes because they're going to help you. I'm going to give you homework. They're going to help you get comfortable with it, but you can't practice this on paper. It's not going to work. Canvas is the key of what I'm working with. Okay, so we have this canvas and I wasn't going to use it because it has a dent in it. But so what I want you to see that this happens sometimes and the canvas is still good. One of the things you do is you wet this back and I use a, a sprayer, a water a sprayer and pump it and you let it get nice and wet. And sometimes when that dries, it just takes care of it for you without, without any problem. But what I uh, what you to do is take a blow dryer and the blow dryer will shrink that up and tighten it. I know sometimes you might see canvases that have little wood pieces and those wood pieces you can, I usually throw them away, but on a big canvas, they're kind of important because you slide these wedges into there and tap them in and they'll stretch out stuff like this. Now you can see that's starting to already go away without the blow dryer. Okay. It just tightens it up. See? Isn't that kind of fun? A little trick, I don't know if you know. <laughs> All right, so the wedges go in here if, um, if you need to be tightened. It's in all corners that way. You want wrap canvases, especially when you don't have to pay for framing because you can just hang these up. See how that dent went totally away? Now I put a new dent in there, but <laughs> okay. So let's get started. 
So now we take our sponge, our painter sponge, we wet just the back. I used to put it in the, in the basin and wet it uh, completely. So you might see videos where I did that, but I don't do that anymore because so many people end up having a big problem with it. Okay, so I want you to see what's gonna happen here. Uh, across this um, canvas, I want you to know that this is already a color, it's white. So then I wanna take cobalt blue and I'm going to go back and forth across here. Now, this is one way to do this quickly, especially if you're doing a big canvas, is that you're going back and forth. Now see the white showing through, you wanna do all your edges too, all right? And you want this movement, all right? So I'm just gonna show you those edges. Now I can, if I even want it lighter than that, I can take and add a teeny bit of white. And that will do a better coverage sometimes. But now, because I have texture in this canvas, let's go back and forth, back and forth. What I'm going to do is, many times you'll see me do circles because the circles cover way better, right? Because it gets into the groove. I can even come in here and add some white. Okay, so I'm just showing you little tricks with this sponge. Okay, keep picking up the cobalt. Okay, little tricks with this sponge. If I want to shade, I never shade from, see this? I never shade like this because I can't blend out that hard line. And sometimes I want to shade purple or something on the outside edge. So if I did this way, I would have a hard line. So I always take, I want this to blend this space right here. So I'm going to touch right here. And this is hard, so it makes it good. You can also, a little trick, this dry edge on this dry surface, you can turn that around when you base coated wood and sand off the nubs after the wood dries with your base coating. All right, so we're gonna come this way and we're gonna push right here. And as we go like that and blend, see how it's a blend? But I can't get this out unless I, unless I turn it where this is inward, not outward, inward. Okay, I know I'm, I'm talking <laughs> like I'm talking to kids or something, but I'm just trying to make it very clear. Now I'm going to go ahead right now and just do edges, all right? But I want to show you another little trick, all right? Now this is when I put my fingers and all inside. See, I might make a more dense in it. So if you do, just spray it afterwards. All right. Now I want to get all these wishy, see all these strokes. All right. So this makes it cover faster. All right. So I'm going to fold this always because if this dries in the sponge, these little pieces are going to get all over your canvas and come off as you're painting, trying to paint. All right. So I fold it in half and I put it right into my dirty water basin. Y'all didn't see that. Right. And now, then when I'm all done, I can go grab this and rinse it out really easily. Okay, so let's come in here and start doing this look. All right, so I've got a wet brush and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna slip, slap, slip, slap. I used to say flip, flop, flip, flop and I got made fun of, so slip, slap, slip, slap. So it's back, forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now I can get going where I get very comfortable with making this quick. All right, and I'd like it to start on here while even if you sponge first or you don't have to sponge at all, but I like to start this pretty quick so that it goes all the way down to the canvas if I want to. I then picked up ink spot. This is a little bit darker. I can put a few of these darker spots here and there. Okay, and so I where I felt, fell in love with this kind of look was when 
I would see all these masters have all this yummy background. And it looked like you're a real artist and you knew what you're doing. <laughs> so I would try to put, oh, I want that little bit of look there and that little bit of look there. Okay, so I want to see those brush strokes. Now, what I would do on a big canvas like this, um, this was a class I was teaching. So I did do a darker spot here and I was showing them that I don't want that look. So just kind of ignore that. You can fix that though. Look, I can come right in here and go over this and take out some of this, all right, from the purple. I, I tried some darker tones there to show them and that it wasn't what I wanted them to do. But see, I can bring in the white to get a lighter color to match that back up there and then get the purple and the blue. But I really didn't have to worry about because what we were doing Next was going to be paint something right over that spot. So you can do that too. I'm just showing you it's fixable. You just come back in here, slip, slap, slip, slap, and work it into the shading that you have here. Okay. So you probably are going to see me paint this on something sometime pretty soon. Okay. There we go. All right. So now what I want you to see is so far I've used cobalt, white, slip slap. I also came in with some ink spot. Now it's just got a different value, but what I would do is if I'm doing a light here, okay, then I can come over and do a light over here. So I'm randomly coming across my canvas and putting light in a triangle. Okay, so cobalt and white. I've got this just on a foam plate. Okay. All right, then white, cobalt, and let's grab some violet pansy and let's put those in between some of this light spot. Okay, little bits of purple. Violet pansy gives you that. But look, I can do cobalt and violet pansy together and get just a little bit darker and get this yummy rich color. But see, I don't want to lose my strokes. You like that? So right in here, I can use some cobalt. I'm not really using much of the ink spot, but I did in some places. Like that's a darker tone that you could actually do the corners like I did them. All right. So now you have a yummy background instead of just a solid blue. Now I might do a solid black. I could do ombre where I go from dark to light. I will be showing you different other fun, different backgrounds in the future. But this is just a quick little lesson saying how to tighten the back of your canvas. I'm just reviewing a little floating medium technique with you and explaining the difference in blending gel floating medium using the painter sponges, Donna Dubry uh, painter sponges, and using our three quarter inch brushes and larger. I have great base cutting brushes that are inch and a half. All right, that we sell. And there's two of these in a package and these are about $10 usually um, for two. And if you're, if you don't see, I've used that for base coating a lot, but if you use them fresh, you can do a very large oversized painting leaves and flowers with this size brush. So sounds fun. So go practice. I want to see backgrounds that you're going to be painting on with all kinds of colors. So this is all in the blue family with blues and purples in the color wheel. So have fun. And just remember, you can go light to medium to dark also. All right. See you next time.